What's going on, everyone? I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle, uh, alongside Nick Starkle, former Texas A&M. And I, I guess we'll throw in their former Arkansas and San Jose State quarterback here because of what's coming up this week. Uh, this is the quarterback room where we break down some X's and O's or uh, just what it's like to be a college football player in some of these situations. Uh, Nick, man, what's going on? Well, you know, coming off a, a good win last week, Colonel Del Mar took down the – Tribuco Hills Mustangs, uh, 17 to 15. Wasn't a pretty one, but we got it done. And a side note, uh, our quarterbacks are all obsessed with Johnny Manziel at this <laughs> high school, as they should be, because I love Johnny. And uh, posted a little story, and we we're all hitting the uh, little top season logo. <laughs> and uh, Johnny reposted it for our guys, and they were pretty stoked on that. So shout out to Johnny. He's a great dude, and um, he's just – he's still so influential in – quarterback rooms across the country yeah so, for sure for really sure cool that's that. uh he's a passing game coordinator over at corona del mar high school in uh california nick is uh so uh yeah let's get into the biggest storyline of of this week and that is uh the quarterback situation at a m um connor wigman of course goes out uh with a lower leg and an ankle sprain uh jimbo fisher called it uh in the about four minutes before halftime, Max Johnson comes in, uh, moves the ball well. Nick, I know from your experience, let's start off with with the front side of that. I remember being in uh, the the Rose Bowl 2017, uh, playing UCLA. This guy, this kid named Nick Starkle, wins out the starting quarterback job for the Aggies. We're all excited to see what 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 he can do. And midway through the game, it's a it's, it's a lower leg injury as well. And Kellen Mond comes in. Just what do you remember about? I mean, I'm sure you remember a lot about that game. What do you remember about that game, that play, and what's that like for a quarterback who has to kind of go through that? Yeah, um, geez. That, I mean, injuries, especially at the quarterback position, and just injuries in general, they can completely change the trajectory of what seems like your life. And I know that sounds heavy, and you're like, well, dude, it's just a, it's a sprained ankle, or it's, oh, it's, it's a broken ankle, but – that, that really does have that ripple down effect um, on you, on a team, on an organization and, and and on your life ultimately. And so basically, you know, I'm, I'm trying to run away from a defensive end who ends up going, I think top 10 in the draft a couple of years later, Jalen Phillips. And uh, he's a true freshman at the time, quick guy ends up taking me down right by the sideline on third down. I think I got like one or two yards on the rush, but <laughs> I just remember he hit me. Another guy kind of landed on me. I popped up, took a couple steps, and I was like, ooh, something's, something's not right. And Coach Sumlin was actually right there next to me. And so I took a couple of steps, and then I kind of buckled down, and I held on to him. And immediately when you go down, especially at the quarterback position, and everyone was watching me because I just had the ball. They saw me get rolled up. I pop up, and then they see me limping. And so immediately I'm going to the training table. And you've got head athletic trainer, you've got um, head ortho over there with you, and they're starting to poke and prod around. And it took probably 30 seconds for them to say, you need to go get x-rays. You know, as soon as they start poking on my leg, my tibia, it's, you know, it's shooting pain all the way up my leg, through my foot. And they're like, all right, we got to go get you to go get x-rays. And at that moment, you know, usually those athletic trainers, they're pretty dialed in and they know, OK, this is just a sprained ankle or, hey, this is probably a break. And so when they tell you, let's go get some x-rays, that's usually not a good sign. And so that's kind of when the emotions hit in. Yeah, and, I want to uh, stop you right there real quick because I have a question there. I know, yeah. especially and I think they had them when you were playing too. that, you know, once that training tent goes up, it's like a. Uh, a hall of mysteries. No one knows what goes on there. I know you said it only took about 30 seconds for them to say, hey, we need to get you to the locker room. But when you, when you go in there, what what is that like? Are they asking you questions? Is it mostly them poking and prodding and you're just kind of sweating it out? What is what is the, the training tent experience like? Yeah, it is a – it's actually a really calm conversation. Those athletic trainers, they are very, very good at what they do. And they get you in there like, hey, okay, what happened? Where are you feeling pain? Is it a numbing pain? Is it a shooting pain? And they're just going through their checklist uh, like they normally would with any other injury. Now, they know, hey, if, if, if this is something where we can just tape you up and get you back out there, then they do have a sense of urgency. But they also are calm with it. They understand like, hey, this could be something serious. We've got to do our, our due diligence 
and make sure that we're taking care of this you know human first before we try to put him back out onto the field and so that always comes first is is taking care of us and I mean shout out to that staff they were they were very great they're very calm in it and they said hey we got to get you to go get x-rays and so they had that cart pulled around and I hopped on the back of the cart and at that moment I kind of knew I knew what I was I knew what I was going to eventually learn in the next you know 10 minutes and so somebody tossed me a Gatorade towel and I kind of put that over my head and you know I, I let a couple of tears out because I was just frustrated and a lot of emotions going through my mind and drive back underneath the same tunnel that I ran out of in the uh, in the Rose Bowl a couple you know hours before that and immediately I go into an x-ray room uh, same x-ray room that everybody else that's gotten you know injured or had a a, a break or something at the Rose Bowl has gone into and so I go in there and sure enough takes about geez maybe two minutes I don't even have my pads off I have my cleat off and my sock off no more ankle tape uh i've got my right cleat on i've got my pants my jersey everything I, my helmet's back at the uh, at the field and they get the x-ray and they walk back around the side and they say hey um looks like you did break your ankle um we're already talking to your parents on the sideline uh they'll meet you over in the locker room and so like any concerned parent you know my my, my mom sees me go down, sees me with the trainers, uh, sees them carting me off. And so my mom walks down to the first row and they told her, you know, hey, look, it's a lower extremity, possibly fractured. Uh, we're going to take him in for x-rays. And then they tell her, hey, look, it is broken. So her and my dad end up getting let onto the field. They bring him into the locker room. And when I get back to the locker room, it's me, our athletic trainer, and uh, my mom and my dad. And that was a pretty emotional time. Uh, for us um, didn't really know what to expect I had never really had a serious injury like that and they had already discussed you know hey look this is probably going to require um, going under the knife and, and, and having surgery and they already had it scheduled for the next day I mean within 30 minutes they already had surgery scheduled for the next morning and a plan for me on how I was going to get the surgery and return to play pro protocol and that is just mind blowing for me because I think that's such a huge deal. And they're like, okay, here, this is how it's going to go. Boom, boom, boom. And it's, it's in line. And so I end up, you know, taking a shower, taking off all of my pads and stuff. I get a boot, I get some crutches and I'm like, I need to get back out there. I kept asking, what's the score? What's the score? What's the score? And as we all know, uh, <laughs> score was not going in the correct way. <laughs> and um, I end up getting back out there. I'm standing on the bench and I see the play where Josh Rosen throws one up. And I'm like, oh, it's an interception. We all like, we got this. It, it's, it's an interception. It goes through our safety's hands and they end up scoring a touchdown on that one. And then at that point, I was like, okay, I'm not sitting on this bench anymore. I'm going to get up and I'm going to start talking to these guys, trying to start rallying them together. Like, we got to get this thing going. And um, and then, yeah, it was, you know, game ends in, a, in an absolute heartbreaking loss. And then on the bus, uh, got home. I think we got home at like 4 a.m. that day. My surgery was scheduled for 7 a.m., and so I just slept at the locker room and I had our athletic trainer take me in about two hours after two hour nap, took me there and had surgery, woke up the next day. Wow. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy that they have it so regimented and scheduled that you were right in surgery that quickly. Uh, what was, what was the reaction with, with your teammates? You know, you're on the bus, you're on the plane, they're seeing you on the sidelines. How, how, what are those reactions like and in, in kind of getting uh, those interactions with your teammates after it happens? You know, it actually happened so quick um, that when I came back out of the locker room with the boot on and, and with the crutches, I had like half of the defense because, they, I mean, they were they were playing a drive. They, they didn't see me interact with the trainers. And during the course of their first like five plays, they had already determined, hey, you need to go get x-rays. And I was out of there. Mm -hmm. And so they just assumed like, oh, they must have just put Kellen in like you know hey they're just rotating guys they might have just put kellen in the game right now and then when i came back out with my boot and my crutches some of the defensive players were like dude what happened what 
like when did this happen no one even no one even really knew what had gone on and that's i mean that's that's pretty like on par uh you're so locked into a game that you're not just looking at an injury tent or you're not looking at the training table or, or the cart that's pulling people you know if it's a big thing and they cart you off of the actual field field well then you know everyone sees it and you know they're all giving you your you know your best wishes and they're saying that they're praying for you and stuff and and then so I, I did come back out with that on and I had a lot of teammates coming up to me and just saying, you know, hey, you know, we're gonna be praying for you, man, like keep battling. And a lot of them just confused on on what had happened. Mm-hmm. And when they found out like, oh, yeah, you, you broke your ankle and you need surgery. Like, oh, shoot, I was not expecting that. And um, and so at that time, I was just like, guys, just, you know, surround Kellen, like be with him right now. Like he needs you guys. And um and they were, they, they really did. They, they surrounded him and, and they encouraged him and, and tried to do everything that they could for him. So, so let's look at the other side of this. You've also been the guy who comes off the bench when a quarterback uh, gets hurt. What are, what are the mechanics of that like? Because, of course, we'll, we'll put into context uh, Connors. You know, he, he gets hit on deep in on a, on a, I believe it was second down play. He gets up kind of limps, was able to play the next play. Uh, but then it's fourth down. They, and during the punt, he goes into the training tent. Um, what is the mechanics like for in the situations that you were in and and when your your numbers called and said hey you got to get in there uh as as kind of the backup and the guy who's spelling the guy yeah um so come in for i mean to come in for for, for an injured quarterback obviously it's 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 never an ideal situation um you, you know you never want anything bad to ever happen to that starting quarterback and that's that's always been my always been my theory is quarterbacks not only are we the heart and soul of the team but like we have to be each other's biggest supporters because if your quarterback room is going at it then you can't have any unity in your whole team and so quarterback rooms where they encourage each other they help each other out and they're wishing for the best actually for each other those are the best rooms and when i was at uh when i was at arkansas actually this happened uh, kj jefferson was starting against lsu i had been Kind of demoted to like third or fourth string uh wasn't even the the true backup but kj goes down in the third quarter and by this time i haven't thrown a football since pregame and it's kind of same thing he gets injured on a third down he gets sacked gets a um a head injury and we're looking at him on the sideline and he he had not really been checked out by the trainers yet and he was really, really out of it. And we're kind of talking to his quarterbacks like, hey, KJ, are you, are you okay, man? Like, what's going on? And just wasn't really responsive to us. And so, you know, we went over, like, grabbed the trainer. And LSU scores. They they kick off. Kick off as a touchback. And our coach is looking over at us going, okay, well, KJ, KJ's not going. So Stark will go. And I, the whole time, you know, I hadn't gotten any reps the whole week at – at you know with our actual guys i've been doing scout team running lsu's offense for for our defense and so you have to have that general knowledge of the game plan of your offense and that comes with it you know having started earlier in the year and and kind of lost that job i knew the general offense and then i knew exactly what we were doing in our game plan i just hadn't physically repped it and i didn't have too much of a heads up and so okay kickoff goes out we don't have TV timeout. And so it is, hey, Starkle, you're in, and the play clock is going. You've got to get ready to go right now. I'm wearing a beanie at the time. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, oh, I haven't touched my helmet since the first, you know, since pregame. I need to find my helmet. And so your equipment managers are really dialed in uh, on where the quarterback helmets are. That's probably like the most important helmets. They find where the quarterback helmets are. And so one of the equipment managers is running back there and finds my helmet and comes out, hands it to me. And I vividly remember I didn't throw a pass on the sideline cause I didn't have time. And so I gave it one of these <laughs> and I went out there and um, I ended up throwing like, a field corner route like the second <laughs> pass that I threw or like a field comeback to the other side I remember I threw two like ridiculously long throws and I hadn't thrown a ball in probably an hour and a half plus 
And so it can be a very stressful situation and you want to kind of just find that first completion. Like, okay, let me just dump this one off to a slant. Let me throw a little out route, get me on the run, throw a boot, throw a little flat to a tight end. But no, we were coming out swinging and, um, and I was throwing it deep. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a weird headspace because you want to be playing in that game, but you never want it to be under those circumstances. You never wish that one of your brothers, one of your teammates, one of the guys that you're closest with, you spend the most time with ever goes down with an injury. And that's the reason that you play. You want to play because, hey, look, I earned these reps. And I'm not saying that a backup going in didn't earn those reps. You earn that, you earn that right to be the guy that's next up. And so Max, is, he's earned that to be next up. And he answers the call. You know, when you get in there, you want to be able to find those completions. You want to be able to operate the offense. And then you kind of catch your stride. And especially coming as a guy that has played a lot of football before in Max, it's kind of similar situation that I had been in. Mm-hmm. It only takes a couple of plays, and then you're, hey, I'm back in the zone. Like, let's let's do this thing now. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, hats off to Max. He he took this opportunity. He ran with it. And I'm really excited to see what he can continue to do um, the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and so from what you were saying, it, it was a, a, an actual you, – you don't ever want that to happen. But if it's going to happen in a situation going right into halftime where you have the whole halftime to kind of get adjusted was a, 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 a boost for, for, for A&M's offense this past week. 100%. 100%. Now you can take that whole entire halftime. Coach Fisher can talk to you about, hey, what are you comfortable with? I know you haven't gotten the crazy amount of reps this week, but what are you comfortable with throwing? What are you comfortable with doing? Um, and and really, it's, yeah, it's, it's talking to those receivers like, hey, guys, we got a guy that you might not have gotten every rep with this week, but he's a hell of a quarterback. He's going to come in. He's going to make the right plays and make the right reads. Help him out with as much as you can. And then probably the the toughest part is the uh, is the communication because sometimes you know you got different different like nuances in your cadence, little little bit different dialects in your cadences and stuff like that. Um, you might have a couple of false starts where the O line's like, "Hey, dude, I can't hear you," or "Hey, it sounds different than whenever Connor's in there." And so maybe they're flinching a little earlier, or maybe the snap's coming a little later. But I don't think that you saw a lot of those um, a lot of those things happen because they kind of had a heads up. It wasn't like a mid drive. They just threw them in, you know, Hey, look, they had halftime. And then they had, when they came back out for the second half, they're getting snaps with him. Everybody's getting right and dialed in. And so I think that if there is a time probably for, for that to be most ideal for, you know, a backup quarterback getting thrust in the position, I think that right before half is, is probably the most ideal time. And so he came in and, and took care of business through two touchdown passes pretty quick. And that's what a uh, and M needed to uh, beat Auburn. Uh, just briefly, uh, from from what you could see on TV, what 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 did you like, and what what did you see that the A and M offense was able to do to kind of uh, flip the script there once he came in? Yeah, I think that it was just they settled him down and they allowed him to just find some completions. Um, you know, whether it's throwing a check down, whether it was throwing you know a little five yard enter route, they, they let him get his rhythm going which is the best thing a play caller can do. Get him comfortable in that setting. Practice is great. You can get as many reps in practice as you can. There's not 110,000 people watching you (laughs) at practice. It's a little different under the lights. And it's a little different under that, you know, 12th man with really the standard that they have. You know, their standard is excellence. and, And they want excellence. They demand excellence out of you. And so you want to be able to get those completions in, and then you want to be methodical in when you're taking those shots. And so, you know, you saw some good play actions. You saw some good deep crossing routes. Hey, get a seven-man protection going. Get that tight end chip in. Get him out. Get that running back chip in and then get him out. And then let's use our athletes and our dudes on the outside and let's take our shots. And I, he threw a beautiful, beautiful ball, deep ball to the left side uh, in the game. And that's that's whenever you can tell, like, okay, this guy is back in his stride. You know, he, he's he got it going now, and I'm really excited to see what he can do the rest of the season, you know, for as long as he's there. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's shift gears just a little bit. You, there's almost no better person to talk about about the upcoming Texas A&M-Arkansas game up in AT&T Stadium, Jerry World. Uh, you've been on both sides of this game. Uh, what 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 is it about this game that, A, makes the game crazy, and B, just stands out into your mind about uh, what, what, what this game's all about? 
Yeah. Um, what, yeah, what a wild, uh, set of emotions it was walking out there. Um, not for the Aggies, uh, <laughs> but for the Razorbacks, um, that one year in 2019, uh, that was a game that I think everyone on both A&M and Arkansas side had, had circled. And every year it is because it's a fantastic atmosphere. You know, playing in Cowboys Stadium is one of the coolest experiences ever. I mean, like that is like the mecca of football. You know, the Dallas Cowboys play there, America's team. And then you get a chance to go strap up your helmet and try to go make some plays on that field. And it's always two teams that are very competitive. I mean, that game is always coming down to like one possession in the last Geez, I don't know. I don't know the stats on it, but I feel like every single time it's one possession or hey, it gets into overtime even. And so we always know at both AM and at Arkansas, this game's gonna come down to the end. And so we've got to make sure we take this thing, keep it close, and then battle in the fourth quarter. Um walking out uh of the field, you know, walking out of the tunnel and not going to the AM sideline and going to the Arkansas sideline was a strange feeling um all the familiar faces that you see on the other side and i'm not just talking about players like i mean i had had my roommates that i was roommates with the year before and they're tackling me (laughs) in the game they're they're blitzing off the edge trying to come and get me but it's you know it's it's the academic support staff it's the athletic trainers it's the strength coaches i mean you just see so many faces that you have so many stories so many memories and bonds with and now you're going against them and they want nothing more than to beat you it's a it's a really really unique experience, but that stadium gets rocking. Everyone comes down to Dallas. I feel like everyone that goes to the University of Arkansas, like I feel like seventy five percent of those people are probably from Dallas area or, or, or from Texas, and so it really is one of the best games in college football. Um, it means a lot to both sides. There's a lot of pride involved in that game. You know, win is the only option it's the only option for that game you uh you don't want to lose that game because that kind of sets the standard for the rest of the season and kind of how how the sec plays out it's usually an earlier game in the season and then that kind of sets you up for the rest of the year yeah i'll, I'll throw one more uh curveball at you because that's become the new thing for this thing i know you mentioned uh playing with kj jefferson what is, what is he like as a quarterback? He's a guy a and going to go up against uh, this weekend. And, and, and as, as a, a guy, what, what can a and fans and the A&M defense expect with this guy? He is a tough quarterback. I mean, like, he is the, he's the epitome of tough. He is going to not shy away from anybody. I remember him as a true freshman. We put him in there against Mississippi State, and he takes a little power read option, goes down the, the line, breaks it to the secondary and he's got a pretty big safety from Mississippi state barreling down at him. And rather than trying to juke, go around him, try to go over him, he goes straight through him and lowers his shoulder, lowers his helmet and just runs right over this guy. And so that was one of his first plays ever in a game. And to me, I was like, okay, this is, this is a little different cat. Like he's got some juice and he is not afraid of anybody. And so you're going to have a fearless quarterback playing against you. And, um, and, and he's definitely going to, going to go out there and kind of look for some hits and, and rely on his lower body as well, which I feel like kind of fits the brand for, for Arkansas football. I remember they had Cole Kelly for a while and they'd put him down in the, uh, in the red zone and in the goal line. And they'd say, Hey, look, go get us those three yards. And they put the ball in his hand and, and, and let him go. And so I'd expect KJ to do the same thing. This is a, like I said, this is a big game about pride. So if it comes down to, hey, we're tougher than you, then they're going to try to out-tough you. And same thing with A&M. Hey, you guys know we're running the ball on fourth and short. Hey, we're going to run the ball on fourth and short and make you stop us. So it, I love this game. Like, I love this game as a fan. I love watching it. Um, as a former player of both sides, I absolutely love it. I will not ever give another score prediction because <laughs> I gave one last year. I gave one last year and it made a lot of people angry. <laughs> and I think I was also – exactly right with my score prediction <laughs> which was very strange <laughs> but i won't do it again well that's why you have to retire because if you get it right you, you should never make another score prediction again just end on a high yeah just i'm ending <laughs> on 100 percent correct on score and winner exactly yeah okay let's finish it out with this because this i thought this was funny when you mentioned you going in that 2019 game playing against guys your roommates guys are kind of trying to tackle you do you remember was there any really funny chirps from your former teammates 
oh. that you can remember that, that that is okay to say on a family friendly <laughs> podcast. <laughs> okay, so I had all of my team. I had all of my. Uh, so I had, I had two former roommates. I had Aaron Hansford and I had Ikena OKK. Love those guys like to death. Like those are like my brothers. They're gonna be in my wedding whenever I get married. And they were telling me the whole week they were going to take my chain off of me if I was in the bottom of a pile. And so <laughs> whole time, anytime I got tackled, I was like holding my neck, making sure they didn't take my chain. And um, and so that was like the whole week going on. And then they also, they would, they sent me a video. Justin Matavike had a picture of me in his locker room the whole week <laughs> up on his locker. And every day they would send me a Snapchat picture of Justin staring at the photo. <laughs> and I was like, if there's one guy not to mess with on AM's defense, it is Justin. And sure enough, the crazy, you know, college football life that I've lived, I end up throwing an interception. It gets tipped up. Sure enough, Justin Matabike catches it. <laughs> and there's only one guy left to try to tackle him. And it's me. And I end up getting hurt on that play, but it was like, Wow, what are the odds the one guy that was saying he was gonna, you know, crush me the whole week, he's the one that I now have to try to tackle. So that's that was a pretty cool that's hilarious. Pretty cool experience looking back at it. Yeah. That's great. That's hilarious. Okay, who do the uh, Sea Kings have this week? Sea Kings play the Edison Chargers here in Huntington Beach. So uh it's gonna be a, a good one, you know. We're matched up right there in the rankings. They're twenty seven, we're twenty eight, and so it's gonna be a great game. Should be a good weekend for football all around. Thanks so much for uh, Nick Starkle for joining us this week and uh, breaking some stuff down. Uh, be sure to check theeagle.com as we continue to break things down for this Arkansas game coming up on Saturday, uh, and we'll talk to you again next week.